Dr. NGR Educational and Research Institute, University, Madhuraboy, Chennai. Dr. NGR Educational and Research Institute, University, Madhuraboy, Chennai. I start with Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam words. Man needs difficulties in life because they are necessary to enjoy the success. A very happy morning to our dignitaries faculty members, students, and the participants of various institutions. I welcome you all for a one-day national level symposium, Physica 2021, conducted by Department of Physics, Phase 2 campus. It gives me immense pleasure to extend a warm welcome to our guest of honor and the speaker for the day, Dr. Suresh Sahadevan, Senior Research Fellow, University of Malaysia. I would also like to give my heartiest welcome to our eminent supporters, Joint Register, Humanities and Science, Dr. Malini Pandey, Joint Register, Phase 2 Campus, Dr. S. Ramalingam, Dean Dr. S. Manivannan, Deputy Dean Academic Dr. A.R. Arnachalam, and Deputy Dean Admin Professor K. Sendil Kumar, Head of the Department of Physics, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, Faculties, Dr. S. E. Kavita, Dr. J. P. Sujitra, Dr. P. Divya, Dr. C. Karnan, and System Administrator, Mr. Ganesh Babu of this symposium. This symposium enhances technical and non-technical skills expected from students in the industry world. I now call upon Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, Head of the Department of Physics, to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning to all. Anivarakum Kale Vanak. First of all, let me thank our Honorable President, Engineer ACS Anand Kumar, for his support in conducting the symposium Physica 21, conducted by Physics Department of Phase 2. I extend my warm welcome to our joint registrar HNS, Dr. Marley Pandey, and influential speaker whose presence for inaugural address itself is a value added for this symposium. I welcome you, madam. I cordially welcome our joint registrar, Dr. S. Ramalingam, Dean Dr. S. Manivannan, Deputy Dean Administration Professor K. Sindhil Kumar, and Deputy Dean Academic Dr. A. Ramachalam for their consistent support in conducting this event. I welcome you, sir. It is a moment of extreme pleasure in welcoming the guests Dr. Suresh Shagadevan of University of Balaya for his special address on role of nanoscience and nanotechnology for future development. I welcome you, sir. It is my privilege to welcome our team members, Dr. Chellamal, Dr. Susitra, and Divya as event coordinators, and Dr. Kavida, Dr. Subhashri, and Dr. Karnan as program coordinators, and particularly Dr. Kavida for arranging guests for this event. It is my pleasure in welcoming the student coordinators, Arti, Pavitra, Niveda, Nivita, Pavina, Sri Vidya, Preeti, and also my beloved students and participants for this event. My special welcome goes to Ganesh Babu, System Administrator, and Harshini Professor of English. Once again, I welcome all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request Joint Registrar Humanity and Science, Dr. Malini Pandey, deliver special address. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, first of all, I would like to convey my thanks to Dr. Radhakrishnan, head of the physics department, for giving me this pleasure and honor to deliver the inaugural uh, address on a very important day. Uh, I see that this is a, a national level symposium on a, such a wonderful theme, such an, a theme that is being talked about so much, the area of nanotechnology, role of nanosciences. And uh, I see that there are several events right from paper presentation to mimicry and singing is there in this uh, national symposium. So I congratulate uh, the department for organizing this. 
I would also like to welcome our um, uh, special guest, Dr. Suresh, who has uh, spared his valuable time to interact and talk to our um, uh, students and our faculty. So um, I'm not a physics person. I'm not an expert on this topic. But what I understand about nanotechnology, it's a branch of technology that involves manipulation of uh, individual atoms and molecules of a material at the nanoscale. That's, I won't talk too much about it because you people are experts in this field. So it's about a manipulation of individual atoms and molecules of a material at the nanoscale. And I, when I think about nanotechnology, I look back at my um, uh, you know younger days. I, I remember in the year 1990, there was a wonderful movie that came, a very hit movie, Total Recall, in which Arnold Schwarzenegger was the hero. And in that, they have shown the concept of self-driving cars which when I was seeing that movie, I thought how impossible it is. And uh, today, uh, boom came Tesla and um, Google also experimented with um, self-driving cars and Tesla is already into that. So um, uh, there were uh, there were so many concepts related to nanotechnology in that movie. Or you see, um, uh, there was another movie that came, um, Avengers, I think, Iron Man, Iron Man in 2000, uh, somewhere, in, uh, somewhere in the 2000s. And in that also, if you see the movie, there are a lot of concepts that deal with nanotechnology. So uh, why I'm telling you that is this is an area, uh, a science that goes, that can uh, give superpowers into uh, molecular structures. Uh, whether it is to make materials that are more water resistant, whether it is uh, converting from heavy to light, fragile to strong, uh, even in the field of cancer. Um, I was reading somewhere, um, uh, nano robots have been used to, uh, uh, you know, destroy, locate and destroy cancer cells. So it is an amazing field, a very vast field. And uh, sky is the limit uh, in terms of research. And most of uh, the countries are right now at the research stage. So um, whenever anything is in the research stage, I think the students should be involved and the research community should be involved more closely. That's a very exciting stage uh, for um, any um, you know, subject to be in. Um, um, I was just uh, doing a general reading um, uh, once and I met across a research that's happening in MIT. In 2018, they started that research, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, some chemical engineers are working on designing a material. It's a wonderful uh, you know, concept. Designing a material that reacts with carbon dioxide. It takes carbon dioxide from the air to grow, strengthen and repair. They are trying to create a material that takes carbon dioxide from the air. Uh, basically what the plants do for building their tissues, taking COT, uh, CO2 from the air. So taking carbon dioxide from the air and uh, trying to grow, strengthen and repair. And you can imagine if such material comes into the market, the amazing, uh, you know, utility uh, in terms of if there's an earthquake, if there is a, a tsunami or any destruction, that material has self-healing powers. So if there's a scratch or uh, the material is broken somewhere, it has the ability to self-repair. So this was a research that started in 2018 in MIT. And um, uh, so I, I, I can I can go on and on. Um, I, being not being a specialist, I'm able to tell you some uh, examples that I came across when I did some reading on this subject. So it's a vast field, and we have an expert here today. We have the physics department faculty. We have students, and I'm sure this uh, symposium will make you think, uh, delve a little deeper on the area of nanotechnology, understand it more, and. Uh, add some value to the society. Um, that is one part related to the subject. The other part, I would say that all these seminars, symposiums, where we all get together, they are extremely important for the student community, especially. Uh, I keep telling in all forums that what you learn in class, the theoretical learning that you get is very important. They are like the foundation stone or the building blocks for you to grow further. But that itself is not enough. Beyond that, it's very important that you, uh, you, you learn how to work in a team. You learn how to lead. You learn how to collaborate. You need to network. You need to Im uh, improve your communication skills. You need to improve your interpersonal skills. You need to uh, be able to accept a different opinion without getting angry, agree to disagree. So all these types of skills you develop when you, when you participate in such events, when you, uh, uh, you know, collaborate with your peers and work uh, uh, on any particular topic. So um, I would say that uh, subject and research is one side. Besides that, your emotional skills, your soft skills, your interpersonal skills, your team working skills, all these are also extremely important, what we call as life skills. 
and any such event helps us in learning all that so uh, my kudos to the department for organizing this event on a very relevant uh, topic um, a very important topic and i hope that uh, we all get amazing uh, learning uh, during this session i thank the department again for um, inviting me today it's an it's a pr privilege and an honor for me and happy learning to all of you thanks a lot thank you madam for your wonderful words uh, i request to uh, display the department videos I request Dr. A. R. Arunachalam, Deputy Dean Academic, to deliver felicitation address. So thank you, ma'am. Uh, so very good morning to one and all uh, connected here. So on behalf of Dr. M. G. R. Education Research Institute, I am to face to campus. I would like to welcome you all to this uh, national level symposium, uh, Physica two zero two one, which is conducted by uh, Department of uh, Physics. So first of all, we are very much uh, grateful and thankful to our honourable President, uh, Engineer A. C. Sarun Kumar sir, uh, for his constant uh, encouragement, support, and motivation uh, towards uh, uh, conducting a lot of uh, activities, uh, uh, especially during this pandemic period. Uh, I mean, during this pandemic period, we have been conducting a lot of uh, online activities, uh, and I really thank him uh, for his kind approval today to conduct this uh, national level uh, webinar. So next, I am very much uh, thankful uh, for to our uh, joint register HNS, uh, Dr. Maldi Pandey, ma'am, uh, for joining with us today to deliver the inaugural address. So I mean, your presence has added more value to this event, ma'am. Thank you for uh, for your valuable presence uh, today. Uh, so next, I would like to congratulate the Department of uh, Physics for taking a wonderful effort uh, towards conducting this uh, national symposium through online uh, platform. Uh, so really, I congratulate the HOD of uh, Department of Physics, Dr. Radhakrishnan sir, as well as the team members, I think the program coordinators, Dr. E. Kavita, Dr. G. R. Subhashree, as well as uh, Dr. C. Karnan, and the event coordinators, uh, Dr. S. Chalamal, uh, Dr. J. P. Suchitra, and Dr. P. Divya, and as well as I think the technical part is taken care of by, by uh, Mr. Ganesh Babu. So it's a whole uh, team effort which has been uh, 
taking care of the entire coordination of uh, today's uh, event. Uh, so I, I once again really appreciate the department for uh, for the wonderful effort uh, to, uh, towards conducting this uh, uh, national level symposium. Uh, so along with the symposium today, we have an eminent person with us who is going to be the guest for today's event. As well as I think he's going to talk about an important uh, session, which is uh, role of nanoscience and nanotechnology for future development. So I really, on behalf of Dr. MGR Educational Research Institute, I welcome Dr. Suresh Sagadevan, who is all the way connected from Malaysia, who is a senior research fellow, uh, Nanotechnology and Catalysis uh, Research Center, uh, University of Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, so thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation. Uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, to deliver this uh, wonderful session in spite of your uh, regular uh, commitments uh, all the way connected uh, from uh, Malaysia. Uh, so so this uh, symposium, uh, I think uh, we have three events. So one is a paper presentation, which is always an important event uh, uh, for any kind of a symposium. And apart from this, there are two other uh, non-technical events, which is mimicry and uh, singing. Uh, so I really appreciate all the students uh, who have uh, shown interest uh, towards uh, taking part in this uh, national level symposium. And I also really appreciate all the other student volunteers of Department of Physics who are also coordinating along with the faculty members in organizing this uh, uh, event uh, successfully. So, I mean, uh, during this pandemic period, uh, attending such kind of online events is always very uh, important. Uh, so this event is especially by the students, for the students. Uh, so these kind of symposiums are actually it's a platform for all the students uh, to expose your uh, skills and uh, talents. Uh, so that's why the department has taken an extra effort uh, towards conducting uh, uh, this national level symposium uh, through online mode. So I once again welcome all the students uh, uh, for taking part uh, and showing your interest towards this online uh, symposium. So really, I uh, wish the department all the best and wish this event a grand success. And I also thank the department for inviting me to talk uh, a few words about this event. So thank you all. Uh, so all the best. Thank you, sir. I request uh, Professor K. Sendil Kumar, Deputy Dean Admin, deliver few words about our department. Thank you, ma'am. A pleasant good morning to all and all connected here. I am happy that I am here to give a felicitation address on this August event. First and foremost, I record my sin sincere gratitude to our Honorable President, Engineer ACS Arun Kumar, for granting us permission to conduct the symposium in a grand manner. I am grateful to eminent personality of our university, Dr. Malini Pandey, joined this Chandas, for gracing the occasion today and delivering inaugural speech, which are the shoe to enlighten the academic community. Today's symposium is organized to motivate the student community to learn new things. It is a great honor and pleasure to welcome our distinguished chief guest, Dr. Suresh Sadagopan, Senior Research Fellow, Nanotechnology and Catalysis Research Center, University of Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, for accepting our to deliver a guest lecture on the role of nanoscience and nanotechnology for future development. Thank you, sir. I wholeheartedly congratulate the Department of Physics for ta taking sincere efforts to organize a national level symposium of this kind. I should appreciate that efforts of Dr. Radha Krishnan, head of the department, Professor Dr. Sellamal, Professor Dr. Kavita, Dr. Susitra, Dr. Divya, Dr. Karnan, and Dr. Subhasti, and Mr. Ganesh Babu. They work so hard to see that every program organized by the department travels a successful journey. I should not forget to mention the gracious cooperation rendered by all participants, students, faculty members from across the nation. We hope to keep up to our expectations and come up with more successful, useful programs like this in future too. Best wishes to all of you. Stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. E. Kavita deliver introduction about our eminent chief guest. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning to one and all connected here. Um, myself, Dr. Kavita, Professor, Department of Physics, Dr. MGR Educational Research Institute, takes immense pleasure in introducing the chief guest, Dr. Suresh Sahadevan, Senior Research Fellow in Nanotechnology and Catalysis Research Center, University of Malaya, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, for the Bondi National Symposium, Physica 2021, conducted by Department of Physics, 
Dr. M. J. R. Educational Research Institute. Dr. Suresh Sahadevan, working as a senior research fellow in Nanotechnology and Catalysis Research Center, University of Malaya. He was a visiting fellow in the National Defense University of Malaysia as a visiting professor and visiting scientist in the Department of Physics, Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, Bangladesh, in the year 2018 and 2020, and also a visiting researcher in the Advanced Materials and Energy Center, Bengu University, China, and is also a visiting fellow in the Department of Advanced Materials, Science and Engineering, Siwasan Chungmung, South Korea. Indeed, his current spans and brilliant discoveries are more focused. Example, nanofabrication, functional materials, crystal growth, graphene, polymeric nanocomposite, glass materials, thin films, supercapacitor, optoelectronics, green chemistry, and biosensor applications. His outstanding research finding and novelty published more than 250 research papers in the ISA top tier journals and also Scopus referred internationally. He has authored 12 international books series and 25 book chapters. Further, he was the editor of three international conference proceedings and one national conference proceedings. He is the editor of the book to elsewhere entitled Metal Oxides for Optoelectronics and Optics Based Medical Applications to be published in 2021. He is the editor, editorial board member, reviewer for various high impact factor journals. He has organized 20 state, national, international level workshops on nanoscience and technology funded by various organizations. He is a member of many professional bodies at the national and international level. Throughout his academic experience, skills, and research background deserve him as a significant Imago journals and international publisher since last year reviewed around 85 research articles in reputed journals. He is an associate member of various scientific societies, organizations, and professional bodies. Recently, he was selected as a part of top 2% of scientists worldwide and is number ninth position at the University of Malaya, Malaysia. He was awarded International Research Collaboration Recognition Award 2018 by Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, Bangladesh, and International Research Collaboration Recognition 2018 by the National Defense University of Malaysia. He was awarded the Certificate of Outstanding Contribution in Reviewing in May 2018, awarded by Optic Elsword Journal. He was a recipient of the Indian Spectrophysics Association Award by the Indian Spectrophysics Association. In addition to that, Young Researcher Award and Young Achiever Award by the Second National Conference on Condensed Matter and Applied Physics held at Government Engineering College, Bikanu, Rajasthan, and Renewable Energy Research and Education on February 20, 2018 in association with Center for Renewable Energy Research, University of Louisville, USA. At present, his Google Scholar citation is 5.7 and H index is 36 and ITIN index is 1.73. So really, we are very fortunate to have such an eminent scientist with us today. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation in, in spite of your busy schedule. Thank you once again. Thank you, madam. I welcome our guest of honor and the speaker for the day, Dr. Suresh Sakadevan, is proceed with your presentation. Sir, we request you to take over the session and enrich us with the knowledge. It's audible. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, 
yes sir you are audible sir can hello sir you can share your ppt yeah i shared not it visible sir oh, one second now it's okay yeah now okay sir can you see my ppt yes sir yes sir okay you can proceed can i start okay uh, good morning one and all uh, connected here i hope everyone safe and good health in the pandemic situation i am very happy to participate symposium uh, organized by department of physics dr mj university chennai india uh, first i would like to congratulate and appreciate the organization team members for this excellent arrangement of this uh, symposium at the outset i would like to thank the management vice chancellor register dean directors and other authorities i special thanks to dr radha krishnan hod department of physics and committee members faculty members from department of physics dr mj university i special thanks to dr e kavita assistant professor department of physics uh, for giving this opportunity in addition i would like to recognize and respect to all the professors faculties research scholars students and participate from the various institution to this occasion today i would like to share some of my thoughts on role of nano science and nano technology for future development you see here the first slide shows that uh, the technology is developed in the three different scales macro scale micro scale and nano scale so 50 years before we lived in that macro scale the technology developed only by millimeter scale and after 1970 the microelectronics uh, as established 1970 to 1999 uh, we used microelectron de devices the scale is 10 to the power of minus 6 uh, uh, meter now we are living in that nano world the nano technology as established in the year of 1992 uh till now uh, it, it is go to around 2050 uh, we used a lot of uh, uh, devices made up of nano structure materials you can see here how to build the things at the nano scale uh, i mentioned that the macro uh, level uh, uh, micro levels uh, macro level scale of uh, things is a millimeter scale we can use that the conventional machines is built and assembled it is a huge size we cannot carry anywhere else after the technology development we used actually macro scale we cannot see we can see that is a visible state but micro we cannot see the normal human eyes we cannot see that but we can see with the help of optical microscope and nano structure material also we cannot see that we can see with the help of this sem and stm uh, uh, scanning electron microscope and uh, transmission electron microscope so like this you can see here this uh, initially we developed the conventional machines is big size large size we cannot carry anywhere else uh, because the size is very huge after the technology developed in micro electronic industry so we can use uh, you know a small size compared to these conventional machines now we can build nano technologies um, uh, products it is very portable and comfortable device we can carry anywhere else it is bottom up self assembled nowadays we can use you know a lot of uh, electronic devices made up of nano structure material with the small size and as a, uh, you know the storage in capacity is more and also very compact we can carry anywhere else this is the advantage of nano structure materials the introduction about uh, nano science and nano technology it is gave a uh, new breath of material science you can see here uh, bulk materials inactive for different technology applications but nano structure material active for Uh, different technology applications the reason is it shows that extraordinary physical and chemical properties uh, i can give some example you can easily understand okay why the nano structure material have uh, extraordinary physical and chemical properties the idea of this synthesized nano material was presented by richard feynman during his lecture there is a plenty of room at the bottom in the year of 1959 so this idea only developed to manipulate and control the individual atoms and the molecules Uh, the term of nanotechnology is coined by uh, Japanese scientist uh, Norio Takeuchi in the year of 1912 to 1999. And what is a nano science? Nano science is nothing but study of phenomena and a manipulation of materials at atomic, molecular, and macromolecular scale. But the properties 
are different significantly from those at the larger scale. And what is the nanotechnology? The nanotechnology is a uh, development of nanoscience is called as nanotechnology. The science of manipulating atoms and molecules to make new material and devices that is called as nanotechnology. The nanotechnology is the interdisciplinary uh, branch where uh, connecting the science and engineering people. And also it is occurs is the size in the range of one to under nanometer. One nanometer is equal to 10 to the power of minus nine meter or about three atoms of long. Uh, for comparison, a very good example, our human hair is about uh, 60 to 80,000 nanometer. The uh, development of nanostructure material in uh, nano, uh, nanostructure materials <coughs> are developed in the year of 2000, uh, such as aerosols and collides. Some products also incorporating the nanostructure materials like coatings, nanoparticle reinforced composite, nanostructure metals polymers and ceramics. So we can call it as first passive nanostructures. In the year of 2005, uh, nanostructure materials applied a vital role in two areas. One is the electronics and another one is bio uh, biotechnology. That means bioactive health effects uh, like uh, targeted drugs and uh, tissue engineering and bio devices. And also electronic application like 3D transistors, amplifier, architectures and uh, adaptive structures. So we can call it as that is a second active nanostructures. And 2010, we can call it as third system of uh, uh, nano system. Uh, we have developed 3D networking and robotics evolutionary. And 2015 to 20, uh, we can uh, make a device, uh, molecular device uh, by uh, atom molecular device or atomic device. So we can call it as the fourth molecular of nano system. This is the development of the nanostructure materials. Okay, what make technology at the nanoscale different from the technology at the micro scale? Uh, usually, uh, when you compare with the bulk material, uh, the nanostructure material have uh, extraordinary properties of chemical and physical properties. Why? The reason is very simple. You can easy to understand. There are two cubes are here. One is a big size of cube. So we assume that this cube is called uh, bulk material. And another one is a small size of cube. So you can assume that uh, the one side of the cube is uh, 10 centimeter and surface area of the cube is uh, 6 a squared. So surface area of this cube is, uh, that means uh, surface area is uh, 600 centimeter squared and volume of the cube is uh, 10,000 uh, centimeter cube. So volume to surface area ratio of this, this uh, big size of cube or bulk material that is 0.6 to 1. That ratio is 0.6 to 1 for this bulk material. When you compare to the, the small, small means nano uh, cube, you can see that uh, one side of the cube is uh, two centimeter. So what about surface area of this small cube? That is 24 centimeter squared and volume is eight centimeter cube. So volume to surface area ratio is three is to one. You, now you can compare with bulk and nano, which one have volume to surface area ratio is high. You can see here, uh, this is one is 0.6 to one for bulk material, but this one is a nano, 3 is to 1. So when you compare with bulk to nano, so nanos have high volume to surface area ratio so that uh, the nanosexual material have unusual uh, physical and chemical properties when compared to the bulk material. This is one example. And another example, you can easily easy to understand. Uh, you can see this is surface. Okay, the large spherical particles do not cover much surface area. It is covered only the small portions. Okay. But when you see that the nanoparticle, okay, it is covered that whole surface area. That means it's varying the fundamental properties of material without changing the chemical composition. This is a two example to understand how the nanostructure materials uh, have uh, superior properties of chemical and physical properties. You see, this is also very quite interesting. There are two scales. One is uh, man-made and another one is natural. You can see here dust mite. Uh, the size is 200 micrometer. The typical size man made it. Some microelectronic devices, components made up of uh, the scale is uh, 10 to 100 micrometer. And hunt size is 5 millimeter. The typical size made by man. Head of the pin is 1 to 2 millimeter. Uh, like this, you know, some RNA and DNA, the scale is uh, 12 to uh, 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 12 nanodiameter. And typical size made by the nanotubes 
And, and next is a very uh, quite interesting. Uh, this is a quantum size effect. Generally, we used uh, as a physics students, you know very well, we can use uh, for the electron device applications, uh, semiconducting material. But nowadays, we can use metal and metal oxide nanostructure material for device application. The reason is when you're reducing the size, okay, the band gap values are increased. You can see here, this, this is a, a good example. Uh, the particle size are uh, large, the band gap values is very small and emits the red light. When you're reducing the size, is again is very small okay you can see that the band gap value is conduction band to valency band is a huge gap and it emits that uh, blue uh, uh, sorry green wavelength again you can reduce the size this uh, then uh, you know uh, compared to this uh, particle size again decreases the band gap values again is increases so this is called as when you changing that uh, when you reducing the particle size we can changing the uh, electrical and optical properties of this material. This is called as quantum size effect. And nanotechnology is not a new concept. It is already existing. You can see the gold nanoparticle in glass are reflected as a red. You, you know that the gold is yellow color. When you uh, mix with the glass and it is reflected as a red. The reason is, you know, that that is called as the quantum size effect. You can see here, uh, due to the changing that uh, size, okay, you can uh, uh, changing that uh, particle size, uh, it is emitting the difference. That you can easily understand this example. You can see here the gold, the size, but it is reflected as a red. And same uh, particle, but same uh, gold nanoparticle, but size is 50 nanometer. You can see it is emitted this uh, green. And also, if the size is under nanometer, you can, it is emitted in this yellow. Uh, and then silver nanoparticle also, you can see. So the size depends on the uh, properties. You can change the color. This is called as quantum size effect. You can easily understand. And you can see here also the size is 40 nanometer, it is emitted this blue color. Okay, the nanotechnologies, you know, uh, it is naturally inspired the nanostructure materials, blanking to the natural world, the remarkable properties due to inherent nanostructures. This is the no, no human modification or processing of these things. You can see here, this is the lotus leaf. Uh, the secret of lotus leaf lies in the uh, waxy microstructure and nanostructure, so that the water uh, uh, not stick on that uh, lotus leaf. So we can call it as the uh, super hydrophobic coatings on the lotus leaf. Uh, by their contact angle with the water, cause it to be bead and to roll away like mercury uh, or gathering dirt as it goes. So this is the reason for, uh, we can call it as the self-cleaning process in this lotus leaf. Another example, you can see this uh, butterfly. Butterfly have the different colors, right? Uh, this is also based on the concept of nanomaterials based on the nanostructures. Another example, the two examples uh, given here, what is a spider uh, silk made up of nanometer wide, the protein crystal. You can see that this one, how it is uh, uh, stated. And also insect and lizards are able to stick on the wall. You know why? Because uh, the reason is uh, the nanostructure on their feet. You can see here. That's why he just stick on that uh, wall. This is called, called uh, uh, nanostructures. Uh, uh, nature inspired this uh, nanomaterial. And what are the types of nanomaterial? There are uh, four uh, types of nanomaterials, uh, zero dimension, one dimensional, two dimensional, and three dimensional. Uh, zero dimension means uh, you, you know that length, breadth, and height are confined at the single point. Uh, we can call it as, uh, that is called as nano dot. So this example is uh, fluorine. And also the one dimension, it has only one parameter, either length or breadth or height. This example is very uh, thin surface coating. You can see here, this is a carbon nanotubes. And two dimensions, it has only length and breadth. For example, nano wires and nanotubes. That is called as the two dimension. And three dimensions, uh, it has all parameter of length, breadth, and height. Example is nanoparticle. That is a uh, You can see that uh, the fluorine, the yes, that this is called a zero dimensional and also nano rod you can see the same image you can see that this is a rod shape and also the nano sheet is a sheet morphologies two dimensional 
on flower structures, you can clearly see that uh, SEM image, uh, this is the three dimensional. So the normal human eyes, we cannot see the surface of the nanostructure material, but we can see with the help of uh, scanning electron microscope, we can see the surface morphology. And as I mentioned that how the properties of nanostructure material, you can see the bulk material, uh, uh, it is converted into the nanoparticle. What about the properties? increasing the properties surface areas increases antibacterial properties so a lot of medical applications a lot of you know gold and silver nanoparticles used for uh, uh, drug delivery applications and also it is increasing all dust that on band gap and electric properties and magnetic properties so all kind of properties are uh, increased when you're reducing this particle size and catalytic uh, better catalytic efficiency due to higher surface to wall ratio and increase the electrical conductivity and uh, increase the mechanical uh, and toughness of the and alloys and uh, spectral shift of optical absorption and fluorescence and increasing these magnetic properties like uh, magnetic coercivity, super magnetic behavior. And then effect of controlling the properties of nanostructure material. You can see here the mechanical properties. So we can call it as this is called a size effect. So when you nanostructure materials become uh, two or one dimensional with respect to this phenomena, we can call it as the changing of the dimensionality. The crystallized changing atomic structures related to the structure is called a change of the atomic structure. This is all of components. Size dependent properties, as I mentioned that previous slides, the chemical properties, reactivity and catalysis, thermal properties, melting temperature, and mechanical properties, addition and capillary forces, optical properties, absorptions and scatching of light, electrical properties, the channeling current, and magnetic properties, the super paramagnetic effect. So I can give one example how, uh, you know, uh, uh, changing the thermal property of nanosexual materials. You can see when you reducing the size in nanosector material, what about that melting point? You can see here, nanosector uh, crystal size is decreased. What about the surface energy? As I told you, you know, volume to surface area is increases. So that, what about that uh, melting point? So melting point of this uh, nanosector material is decreases. Why it is decreased? The reason is the surface of atoms require less energy to move because they are in contact with this fewer atom of the substance. What is the advantage? When you're reducing, uh, you know, uh, decreasing the melting point. For example, you see the three nanometer of cadmium selenide nanocrystals uh, melt at 700 Kelvin, but in bulk form, it is go for higher temperature. That means 1678 Kelvin. So we need for higher temperature when you're using for bulk material. But when you're reducing the size, we can use at, uh, melt at the lower temperature. And another example, this is for thermal and optical properties I can give. You can see the bulk gold. The bulk gold is up. This is the quantum size effect, right? Uh, when you're reducing the size, the changing the color, that is means the red color. It is emitting the red, right? Nano applications. One is a top down process, the another one is a uh, bottom up process. The top down process is very simple. You know, materials. Sir, sir, you are not audible.
gold. Interesting, but very challenging to fabricate this type of nano, metal oxide, metal uh, nano couch. The size ranges between 10 to 150 nanometers. The 10 to 150 nanometers. Uh, you know, uh, you can see that the SEM image. You can easily to understand that uh, this is all uh, interior and porous walls inside this. Uh, you can see that uh, SEM image. So this is called as nano couch. Uh, what are the applications? It can be used for uh, multi photon luminescence uh, and also it can be used for drug delivery system because you know the porous material used for drug delivery applications and next is the nano crystal nano crystal is a single or multi phase uh, polycrystalline solid with the grain size less than of under nanometer uh, is a cubic crystal you can see here uh, this also diamond nano crystal what are the applications when you are preparing in your laboratory this kind of nano crystals it can be used for various applications in electron device applications like memory devices solar cell solid state display photo detectors and field effect transistor detectors and next is the nano belt nano belt is a thin and flat sheets or ribbon like structure that are typically 30 to 300 nanometer size you can see here this cadmium sulfide nano wires you can see that uh, you can uh, you can see that right this is like a belt shape but when you go for higher magnification then you can see that nano wire this is like very thin but you can go for nano belt uh, like uh, uh, again same uh, uh, this one and zinc oxide you can see the nano belt shape you can easily understand this is ribbon like structure and nano belts with rectangular cross section and well defined crystalline facet then able to attain the unique uh, optical confinement micro cavity catalysis and piezoelectric effect so what is the application of this kind of nano belt nano belt have profound uh, impact in the field of cell powered nano devices and nano system they have application of field effect transistor devices, nanometer sized ultra sensitive gas, biosensor, resonators, and cantilevers. And nanofibers, these are uh, 2D fiber structures having the diameters less than 100 nanometers. You can see here this is a nanofiber. So the nanofiber it could be useful for uh, the potential application in environment and biomedical. In environment is water filtration system and biomedical surgical implants, biosensor, drug delivery, and also the electronic devices and tissue engineering. So a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the nanofiber, uh, it can be used for the potential applications. And nanoparticle, uh, you know, many people are preparing nanoparticles in uh, the shape of the dimension is one into 10 to the power of minus nine and one to 10 to the power of minus nine meters, the range is known as uh, nanoparticle. Uh, nanoparticle having a wide range of applications. It is covered uh, all areas, biomedical devices, a biosensor, tissue engineering, bio agitators, bio imaging devices, and also electronics and auto electronic devices. Industry. Nanoparticle like metal and semiconductor metal oxide is a great interest for a wide variety of applications, field of information, energy, environment. So uh, it's a unique properties. Uh, we can prepare this nanoparticle. And next type is the nanotube and nano rod is you know a uh, nanotube is microscopic uh, tube whose diameter is measured in the nanometer usually less than 100 nanometer but nano may a uh, nanotube are is mostly hollow when you compare to the nano rod is a contradictory it is nano rod is a solid structure with the aspect ratio is 3 is to 5 and each of the dimension from 1 to 100 nanometer so why what is the application where it can be used nanotube and nano rod Nanotubes, uh, especially carbon nanotubes, has the potential uh, to design one of the technology applications. Carbon nanotube can be used for many applications uh, like supercapacitor, accutators, and electromagnetic fields. Also, the biotech field of nanosense. This one is nano wire. Nano wire is a small uh, CM image. Uh, it's a, like, uh, a very thin. Uh, you can see that this is a thin wire, the silicon nano wires. Uh, it can be used for uh, uh, electronic for PM solar uh, etc. So different applications and the nano wires. And next is the
nano computing technology the supercomputer the supercomputer you know uh, it can be achieving the significant reduction of the size for first great speeds this is the next generation of computer chips ah uh, this is graphene you know the graphene was synthesized by a uh, chemical method at the room temperature the graphene has a honeycomb like structure uh, sheets of carbon material with the sp2 hybridized atom you see that surface area is a high theoretical surface area that means you can see uh, is one uh, basically one gram of carbon uh, oxide sheets can cover half of the football ground so that it is potential application graphene can uh, high uh, surface area iest electrical conductivity strong mechanical properties you can see the example of how much of strong the strong structural scale and also you can see here I, it would take an elephant balanced on a pencil that much of uh, strength and breaking strength is far to meter meter in this one the excellent thermal conductivity so the graphene could be useful for potential application in the uh, technology development you can see here a uh, few example i mentioned graphene based gas sensor uh, the graphene used to a gas sensor uh you can see here this is uh, the post and then graphene the gas sensing graphene based gas sensor have recently attracted intensive attention due to the atom thick two dimensional structure and excellent properties of graphene sheets uh, graphene is a unique and attractive sensing material for gas sensor and next uh, graphene based nano material as a bio sensor you can see here is a respect of molecules and then uh, target molecules electrode layer the respirator is uh, uh, like organic or inorganic material uh, that interact especially with this uh, target molecules the target molecules can be organic or inorganic or even the whole cells this transducer is a part of the sensor which converts the chemical information to the measurable signal so this is a graphene based biosensor and then uh, graphene polymer uh, solar cell graphene has shown in the great potential uh, transparent electrodes as a replacement of uh, indium oxide polymer uh, based on the uh, you know ito substrate uh, solar cell uh, this graphene is the electrode becomes organic inorganic hybrid material after it is undergoes the coating layering reduction and temperature annealing you can see here uh, different uh, polymer based uh, graphene polymer composite used as a solar cell applications devices and next to the application of uh, uh, nano composites the uh, a range of polymeric nano composites are used in for biomedical applications like uh, tissue engineering drug delivery and cellular therapies why the reason is uh, unique interactions between the polymer and nano particles a range of property combinations can be engineered to mimic uh, native tissue structure and properties you can see here this loading of a uh, gold nano particle uh, and then chemical leaching and drug loading and drug release so uh, it can be useful for that drug delivery and as well as tissue engineering application and application of uh, carbon nanotubes you you can see the uh, carbon nanotube schematic uh, image you can understand that carbon nanotube based biosensor are recognized to be a next generation of building block for ultra sensitive and ultra fast for biosensing system and nanotubes uh, again the carbon nanotubes used to for uh, great potential as anode material for uh, lithium ion batteries uh, due to their unique structural mechanical and electrical properties and application of uh, nano fibers 
the nanofibers have many possible technology and commercial applications. Uh, they are used in tissue engineering, drug delivery, cancer, diagnosis, lithium air battery, optical sensor, and air filtrations. Application using of nanowires. Nanowires also used biological chemical gas sensor, uh, such as, you know, uh, uh, transparent uh, mesh, some uh, light, uh, light emitting diodes, and silver nanowire transparent conducting electrode for high efficiency. Uh, three night, uh, nighted uh, light emitting diodes. So the different applications, technology applications used by this uh, kind of uh, nano wires. And next, the medical application, you can see there are the two kind of uh, the drug uh, delivery system. One is untargeted drug delivery system. This is the drug. Uh, drug, uh, you know, tagged to nanotubes, uh, targeting for six cells. Following this uh, interaction of nanotubes with that cell respirators, and then drug is released. Okay, you can identify if you want to uh, release the drugs that is called as targeted. This is you can uh, you know randomly you can uh, release the drug means is untargeted drug delivery system. So here uh, uh, this is acted as a drug and this is a guider and this one is a uh, uh, cell receptors and now you can identify that where you want to uh, inject this drug and you can. Uh, release a drug and it's kill these six cells. Even you can get immediate relief. This is called a targeted, targeted drug delivery system. And also nanomaterial at the future uh, drug delivery. Uh, drugs are able to reach the site and action more effectively. You can see that uh, this is for the. Uh, you can see that the image shows that uh, uh, toxicity is more when you uh, inject the. Uh, drugs after you can see that image uh, low, uh, low systematic toxicity that is uh, uh, some you can see this one uh, nanoparticles acted as a drug and as well as load uh, this is the drug loaded in the nanoparticle you can see that this different uh, shapes and size of this uh, molecule so we can make it as uh, drugs with the different molecular shapes and chemical properties can be synthesized the different properties result in these greater possibilities. Okay, what is advantage? As I mentioned, right, this is very small size in the range of 10 to the power of minus 9 meter. Uh, the particle size is very small, means 5, nan 5 nanometer or 6 nanometer, you know, less than of, uh, 10 nanometer we can use to for uh, drug delivery. And the uh, high surface to volume ratio, uh, one or more therapeutic drugs can be attached. Uh, attached to specific target cells and organs with selected binding agents. Uh, helps to avoid the fluctuation of the drug by using the time release. And next, this is a nano diamonds. Uh, you can see the specific of cancer drug design. Uh, drugs can be placed in a nano diamonds. You can see here this is a nano diamonds. Nano diamonds contain the receptor that allow them to only to bind the reactor with the tumor cells. So the nano diamonds release the during into the tumor cell and result in highly effective the treatment. So in this kind of uh, nano diamonds can be used for this uh, cancer drug design. And uh, also the specific cancer drug design of carbon nanotubes. The carbon nanotubes carrier have molecular stands that contain the antibodies and link system to cancer cells. To recognize the cancer cell by pH and biological markers. You can see here this one. Uh, and then uh, these carbon nanotubes of uh, uh, mm, some polymer uh, coated yeah, attached with the antibodies to bring it, especially uh, to your cancer cell. Uh, what, what's happening uh, inside that? You see the drugs inside that nanotube uh, can be released in the presence of radio frequencies. So metal nanotubes also heat in the presence of uh, radio frequency waves. So that uh, finally one of these cancer cells. This is called a, a specific cancer drug design of the carbon nanotubes. And application of metalloxy nanostructures. Uh, metalloxy nanostructures uh, used for uh, you know uh, different applications, uh, a wide variety of application. It is like transistor, sensor, lithium ion batteries, energy storage, solar cell, catalytic and photocatalytic process, non-volatile memory devices, tunneling devices, bioceramic and uh, antibacterial coatings. You can see here the gas sensor and humidity sensor, antibacterial coatings, microwave device, supercapacitors, lithium ion battery high density recording, solar cell, solar filters, transistors, and VLSI applications, uh, organic LED, uh, light emitting diodes, optical lens, and optical meters. So this, uh, you know, lots of device made up of with this uh, metal oxide nanostructure materials. 
and what are the some application in nanotechnology nanotechnology is uh, covered in uh, you know uh, different areas biotechnology transportation national security and defense food and agriculture medicine aerospace energy environment advanced materials of textiles and information technology nanotechnology uh, you know uh, why we prepared nanotechnology product the reason is lighter stronger smaller uh, faster and then more durable you can see here, there are over 800 products market they either have nanostructure or developed through the nano process advanced technology electronic industries as i told you the first one uh about the needs of uh, transistors uh, uh yeah the transistors to run digital cameras uh, and then graphic lights yeah. and this uh micro हेलो ना ऑडिबल सर ओके हेलो सर हेलो हाँ सर यू कैन कंटिन्यू सर सर यू कैन कंटिन्यू सर यू कैन कंटिन्यू सर Sir, you are not audible, sir. Hello. Ah, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, can can now can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Now we can hear it. Your your voice is breaking. Now it's okay. Ah, uh, now it's okay. Now it's okay, sir. Again breaking. What's that? It's a breaking, sir. It's again breaking. sir sir can you hear me ganesh sir yes sir you can hear i can hear you now okay 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 and electronics uh, as i told you know uh, improving the display screens on electronic devices and increasing the density of memory chips reducing the size transistor in the integrated circuit uh okay now it's visible sir yeah, it's visible sir go for full screen mode 
a full screen only right we cannot see it okay you can see the ppt list you stop this sharing one? and stop it again sir can i share again right yeah No, it's okay, sir. Uh, it's uh, loading. Ah, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. And, uh, yes, uh, see the also nano material, lightweight solar cells, and nanotechnology helps produce the set of equipment. And also the food uh, nanotechnology can be applied in the production of processing and safety and packing of the food. Nano material can improve the taste of the food also. Nano composite coating can improve the food packaging. Nano material can improve these health benefits that food delivers. And also the textiles nano fibers makes the clothes and water to strain uh, repellent or uh, wrinkle free. Textile with nanotechnology finish can be washed uh, less frequently and low temperature. And also the optics. Optics is, you know, uh, for optics, nanotechnology also offer this uh, scratch resistance surface coatings. A nano optics could uh, allow for an increasing the, uh, you know, precision of uh, pupil or repair and uh, other type of uh, laser eye surgeries. So a lot of applications uh, made by this uh, nano structured materials and solar cells, as I told, you know, uh, comparison of uh, development of nanostructure solar cells uh, that can be manufactured at uh, significantly uh, lower cost of than conventional solar cells. Commercially available solar cells have much lower efficiencies, 50 to 20 percentage. Nanotechnology could help increase the efficiency to around 40 percentage. And fuel cells, uh, fuel cells, uh, nanotechnology is used to reduce the cost of catalysis using in the fuels. Nano batteries. Nano batteries, uh, 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 rechargeable batteries with higher rate of uh, recharging using nano material could be helpful for this battery dispersal problem. And also, uh, nanotechnology used for different, uh, uh, you know, uh, cleaner of water. Nanotechnology is used to develop solution of problem in the water quality. It helps to remove the industrial water from that uh, uh, water. Uh, and then biotechnology, as I told you, right? The consumer, lot of applications, chemical sensor, and as many, many applications made up of these nanostructure materials. And this one, it discovered that whole area, energy, environment, uh, drug delivery, sensing, and agriculture. So many, many applications. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I can share some uh, information to audience and as well as faculty members. Our center uh, launched two journals. One is a Malaysian Nano uh, International Journal and another one is a Malaysian uh, Catalysis and International Journal. Uh, so those who have interested to publish your uh, research uh, papers in our journal, you can send it to me and then I can help to publish in two journals. Not it, it is uh, Scopus Index, but we can go very soon uh, this journal index by this Scopus. Now we started this journal. I am the deputy editor in chief of this journal. And also uh, we are organizing an international conference, uh, face to face conference uh, in 2021, uh, in 1 to 3 September in Langabi. So those who are interested to participate, uh, in international conference, the paper, you know, this is, uh, I can provide the details. Uh, you can check in that our uh, uh, center website also. You can get the information. Uh, so you can uh, uh, participate in this conference and we can publish paper in ISA index journals also. And next, uh, the journals uh, I'm the editor member. This is my collaborator, uh, editor in chief, based in Development Material Chemistry. So if you want to publish any papers in the journal, you can send it to us and I can help to publish papers. This is also one more journal, International Journal of Multifunctional Material and Four Science. And next, I should thanks to my collaborators and uh, 
uh, acknowledges. So thank you. Once again, I thank to uh, Professor Dr. Radha Krishnan, head of the Department of Physics, and uh, Dr. V. Kavita from uh, Aston Professor, Department of Physics, and other faculty members from Department of Physics for giving me the opportunity to share my uh, ideas on role of national science and nanotechnology for future development. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for delivering a wonderful and informative session. I now call upon Dr. C. Karnan to deliver a word of thanks. Good morning to one and all connected here. On behalf of Faculty of Humanity and Science, I would like to thank our Honorable Founder Chancellor Thiru Yeshi Shanmugam and the beloved President ERACS Arun Kumar for their motivation and support to conduct this national symposium. I extend my gratitude to our joint register, Dr. S. Ramalingam, De Dean Dr. S. Manivannan, Deputy Dean Dr. A. R. Arunachalam Academic, and Deputy Dean Mr. K. Sendil Kumar Admin for being the pillars of support in conducting this national symposium. I would like to thank our HOD Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, Department of Physics, for his constant encouragement for coordinating this event successfully. Heartfelt thanks to the eminent person, today's guest of honor, Dr. Suresh Sagadevan, for sharing his knowledge and experience in nanoscience and nanotechnology. Thank you once again, sir for your inspirational and informative speech. I thank the organizing committee, Dr. S. Chalamal, Dr. E. Kavita, Dr. J. P. Sushitra, Dr. P. Divya, department staff and vibrant students for their devotion towards organizing and executing this event successfully. I sincerely thank Mr. Ganesh Babu, system admin, and Dr. Arshini of English department for their online and offline support. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next session, technical and non-technical events. All participants will join in Google Meet by using the link. Thank you. Thank you for all.